Hello again, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical skeptic, uh, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. I came. Uh, I just got a message uh, from a guy called Creative Mind, uh, which was write, written as uh, called Christian with Aspergers. Um, he writes to me, "Hi, I have Aspergers and I'm a Christian. I've been having doubts about my faith lately because I recognize evolution as scientific fact." It's hard to believe in a literal creation story and have, the ra and have a ra ra uh, rational Asperger brain. However, I am still Christian because of overwhelming evidence supporting my faith. Please, please feel free to look at my videos and to respond if you wish. Thanks, Andrew. Well, you know, the thing is that, you know, um, there may be evidence for his faith, there may not be. But one thing which really spooked me about with that message which he came back with was that this was a fellow Aspie. This was another uh, person like me who is a hyper-rational, uh, you know, w our brains are designed for this, to be able to hold in a lot of info and to be able to work hyper-rational. And, uh, you know, but, e but even he's now having to start having doubts about his faith uh, because of this contradiction between creation versus evolution. And I have to, uh, and I've already expressed this before, about, um, about the possible theory of, you know, uh, creation, uh, you know, of, uh, of uh, you know, the Bible giving scriptural support for evolution. But, you know, this is beginning to, um, this whole issue is really beginning to piss me off. Um, I hate to say it. I'm going to explain this again for those of you who don't get it. Uh, well, again, for the, again, I want to make this perfectly clear as to the fact that there is a, uh, you do not necessarily need to reject a, you do not necessarily need to reject evolution for a belief in the Bible. And I will make this perfectly clear. To take the Bible literally, may, um, you know, depending on the context, in to take the Bible literally is not really a critical thinking stance at all because it's doing the exact same thing, uh, that exact same type of argument that Richard Dawkins was saying about moderate Christians who uh, overlook certain parts of the Bible um, because of the fact that they're uncomfortable. And um, here's one of the ones that's prominent. Again, according to the book of Genesis, the sun, was the, the sun, the moon, and the stars were not created until the fourth day. This means the first three days were. Um, this means that the first three days were an indeterminate time period. They could have been billions of years without, you know, uh, by our standards. Second Epistle of Peter, chapter three, verse eight says, "A thousand years is but a watch in thy sight, O Lord," uh, meaning that there, you know, that um, you know, meaning another time dilation effect. Even with, you know, uh, even you know the, the remaining days, you know, even after the sun, the moon, and the stars were created, may not necessarily may, may not necessarily have even been a uh, human time measure. They could have been God time, God's time measure, you know, meaning that there would have been plenty of time. And that coupled with the fact that, according to the Bible, first the the land and the sea were parted. You know, uh, first the heaven and the earth were created, then the uh, then the land and the sea were created, then plants were created, then sea animals, then land animals, and then people. And uh, from that time, uh, you know, birds as well were created about the same time, and then land animals, and then people. Remember, according to evolution, there were two different spurts off. There were one group of uh, of these various mammal uh, reptiles and like that and the like who crawled out of the. Um, you know, who crawled out of the ocean, and that group would have split off into two groups, one of which would have become birds and the like, you know, crawling up into the trees and developing feathers and the like, and eventually being able to fly. The other group of which would have continued evolving until they eventually became mammals and various other land animals until humans evolved. Remember, two different lines. This could measure exactly what they were talking about in relation to, um, you know, the scripture could mirror almost exactly evolution if you took a look at it with those extra verses put in meaning that it was a metaphor. Bear in mind as well that we're talking that, you know, assuming that God existed, again, I'm still skeptical, but even if God existed, let's for the sake, for the sake of argument, if you were trying to put scientific data in, you would not explain it to, you know, you would be writing the Bible for the people of the time period that you were trying to design it for. And this is where, uh, and the entirety, you know, both the skeptic and the, and the uh, fundamentalist religious movements, you know, all, mo almost all the religious spectrum have completely, um, you know, gone with this literal approach and have completely ignored, you know, these other verses, you know, the, the, the sun not being created until the fourth day. And second epistle of Peter chapter three, verse eight, which is the most pivotal piece, wh uh, which could connect back to all of this. This, and I'm not the only one who's come up with this, okay? I'm not the only one who's just, you know, uh, randomly shooting my mouth off here, okay? This was even set up in, this one, uh, the precedent for this uh, interpretation of the Bible was set up in the American court system. The Shope's Monkey Trial, remember? The, uh, the famous, the, the first two of the famous cases where, um, where it was fought as to whether or not evolution should be taught in school. The defense lawyer 
the uh, the the prosecution lawyer won the case on a technicality, but lost the appeal of the uh, but lost the um, the uh, support of the American public. And he lost the support of the American public because of the very fact that this interpretation could have been brought out from the scripture. As in, that God might have been supporting the theory of evolution. You know, was actually subtly saying, this is the mechanism by which I am working. Okay? If you want to take a better look at the Bible, don't just take a look at it based on what it said there. Take a look at it based on, um, from what we know of science and the like, you know, um... If the Bible was meant to be a timeless piece of, uh, of uh, you know, if the Bible, like all the, um, like all these other uh, religious scriptures, are supposedly meant to be timeless, uh, or what have you, you know, um, you know, were meant to be timeless uh, pieces, or what have you, then theoretically speaking, they would have been written in a vague language initially that would uh, that could be interpreted by any era, you know, or would have been initially started off, you know, they would have been initially started off trying to explain science or explain, you know, the the mysteries of the universe to a people who didn't have a reference of science. It's like trying to explain, uh, if I try to explain quantum mechanics to a four-year-old, you know, I try to explain the second law of thermodynamics to a grade seven kid, and he already had difficulty understanding what it was about. And we're worried about lack of scientific, uh, you know, understanding and the like. Well, if our culture, think about this logically, if our culture already has a difficulty trying to understand, uh, you know, science that's at a university level or only just like a few years of study ahead of what the popular level is at, Imagine what would happen trying to explain science or advanced technology of our level and day and age of and understanding to a man to who uh, to a human who was um, who was several thousand or million years uh, you know uh, to several thousand years um, you know less advanced than we. I mean, we've been able to communicate with uh, chimpanzees and the like, but we've never been able to communicate um, scientific concepts to them. They only have a grade two level of understanding. Um, you know, we've, we've never been able to explain uh, scientific concepts to animals, and we wouldn't be able to, um, have you, there's something, uh, a pivotal piece known as cargo cult. Uh, this is a, uh, another um, proof of this. Um, humans uh, in various uh, primitive parts of the world, uh, particularly back during World War II, saw advanced things like, uh, like radios and, uh, and planes and all the like, and they developed what was called cargo cult. They resorted to religion to explain these advanced forms of technology that the West had brought in during World War II. Now, realistically speaking, you know, these are primitive cultures who are resorting to religion to explain this. Don't you think that it would probably be likely that some group of people, whether science fiction writers who figured out the theory of evolution, or whether, um, you know, or whether God trying to explain it to people, you know, the computer programmer analogy, in either case, wouldn't it be more likely that a, um, you know, that the Bible was written for a time period when people were primitive? It is now outdated, and you know, yes, it was providing a supportive script, you know, yes, it was providing a uh, a support of evolution, yes, it was providing a very basic under, you know, uh, description of history, which wasn't a very good one but a very basic one and you know was trying to explain and you know it was not trying to explain it for people to our day it was trying to explain it to people of the day and age it was in okay the bible is now outdated if anything the only things that we should take out of it are the timeless classics love uh love one another as i have loved you you know um love thy neighbor and if people are worried about you know certain sections of the old of the new testament well that was chopped up and re-put together and uh here's another one for you for atheists who say, well, how could it be a loving God? You know, you're ignoring the bits about where God, uh, you know, killed all these people who were heathens and stuff like that in the back of Old Testament. Have you ever heard the expression, people change? Hello? A God who might have been initially vengeful might have actually has started having second thoughts later on. Remember that uh, the traditions of the time period, uh, you know, my mythologizing this God, um, is that it's anthropomorphized. Remember that the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans at the same time period had uh, gods with very human traits to them. You know, this would not be that this would not be uh, you know uh, out of context for the time period. You know, um, you know, I'm not saying that this is proof of the Bible's uh, you know uh, authenticity. I'm saying that the entire argument about whether or not uh, God exists based on what the Bible has said, you know, in terms of a loving God, or why God won't heal amputees. See my other videos for the reasons why not, you know, uh, particularly if we're working with a computer programmer analogy. Uh, as for, uh, you know, God talking to these people, probably not directly. We, you know, if they got anything which wasn't science fiction, they were probably, you know, getting it via some sort of psi modulation. You know, uh, I mean, like, this, you know, watch my other videos on explanation of this, and for God's sake, do, you know, Try to reapply your other data in a much more broader context, not just in a very literal context. You got to be able to learn to think outside the box. And I was shocked that an Aspie couldn't do, uh, you know, an, that an Aspie didn't have the uh, the information to be able to do this. 
So anyway, that's the reason I'm making this video. Creative Mind, if you see this video, um, hopefully uh, view my other videos and hopefully this will help. For the rest of you, 